The movie starts by traveling deep down into the ocean to Kepler Station. The purpose of the station is the command and control deck for the Roebuck Drill. Inside the station, one of the crew members, Nora Price, is brushing her teeth when she hears an unexpected noise. She leaves the bathroom to investigate. In one of the tunnels, she looks up and notices a drip coming from the roof above her. Just seconds later, the walls of the station suddenly cave in and Nora starts to run through the station. She is slipping on water and banging on doors along the way to alert her colleagues to the issue. One of her colleagues comes out and they both run towards a room containing a control panel to try and fix the problem. An automatic announcement sounds throughout the station, which says that the structural integrity of the unit has been damaged. More of Nora's colleagues start to run towards the control panel, but it becomes clear that they won't make it in time before the water catches up with them. Nora makes the decision to seal off the door to the control panel to save herself and her colleague. They are then both knocked unconscious by an electrical explosion from the control panel. Nora wakes up on the ground with water dripping onto her. The automated voice announces that structural failure is imminent. Her colleague wakes up and they both get back on their feet and go over to the control panel. Nora makes a mayday call through the radio, but there is no response. They both start to hear loud noises and creaks as the structure of the station continues to cave in. They realize that they have to do something to survive. They leave the room and reach the central control. When they get there, Nora tells her colleague that she's a mechanical engineer and attempts to reset the circuit breaker. Her colleague introduces himself as Rodrigo. They wonder whether the explosion and the impacts that they felt was an earthquake. They then check the status of the station on the computer next to the central control. The screen shows that 70% of the station has already been compromised. Nora and Rodrigo leave the central control room and walk through the rest of the station in search for an escape pod to use. Most of the station is leaking, destroyed, and in complete darkness. They hear a male voice coming from the rubble. They crawl towards it, and Nora recognizes the man as her colleague Paul. They pull him from the rubble, and they all continue to walk through the station. Along the way, they encounter the bodies of some of their colleagues who have not survived. Paul, Nora, and Rodrigo then come across Captain Lucian, who is trapped in a room. The door is jammed, but they manage to open it. Nora asks him why he didn't leave in one of the escape pods, and points out that he should have, as he has a child. Her question is ignored by Captain Lucian. Between them, they try to figure out who is missing, who has escaped, and who has survived. They come across two more colleagues, a biologist, Emily, and an engineer, Liam. Together, they try to come up with a plan to escape the wreckage and survive. They realize that they only have around 30 minutes before the complete structural failure of the station. Captain Lucian takes charge and tells the team that the plan is to head to the Roebuck station. The rest of the team are surprised by this, as it's one mile down and one mile across from their current location. It's risky, but the only other nearest place they could go is Shepherd Station. However, there aren't any escape pods at Shepherd Station, so there's no point in going there. As they start to prepare to leave Kepler Station, the team find a recording from the point that the structure of the Kepler started to fail. They hear their colleagues screaming, followed by an animal-like noise roaring in the background. Some of the team put this down to the movement of the water and the structure failure. Others aren't as convinced. As they each put on diving suits, they acknowledge that they might die trying to get to Robach. The diving suits simply aren't designed to be out in the water for long periods of time. They're usually just used to go out and fix a pipe, for example. But it's the only option they have. They start to head down into the sea to try to make it to Robach. However, the force of water pressure propels them backwards and the glass in Rodrigo's helmet cracks and then shatters. He is killed. No one knew that the helmet was faulty. Shocked, the rest of the crew continue to make their way down to the sea floor and towards Robach when they notice a distress signal below them coming from one of the escape pods. They wonder why it isn't going to the surface and decide that they should go to help. Liam and Paul get back into their suits and go over to investigate. They arrive at the location of the distress signal and see that the escape pod has imploded killing the person inside. They look inside and find a body in the rubble. As they're looking around, a creature suddenly emerges and attacks them. They realize the creature has been eating the body. 
Liam kills the creature and takes it back for Emily to analyze, as they're unsure what it is. When they return to see the rest of the team, Emily analyzes the dead creature that attacked Liam and Paul. She confirms that she thinks this is a new species. As she examines it further, she says that she has never seen a sea creature like this before, and notices that part of the creature's tail looks like talons. The team continue to make their way to the sea floor, when the Kepler explodes above them. Debris from the Kepler falls around them and nearly buries them. Liam is hit by some falling debris, but is saved by Nora and Captain Lucian. The team doesn't have a moment to spare, and can't stay out in the water with the falling debris surrounding them. Quickly, they all struggle towards an access tunnel, which leads to an intermediate station. They have a moment to rest in the tunnel but they can hear the falling debris from outside hitting the station. They make their way through the tunnel, which is filled with water to waist height. While walking through the tunnel, Paul suddenly finds himself attacked by a creature lurking beneath the water. It drags him under quickly. Despite the crew's desperate attempts to save him, the creature's strength overpowers them, and Paul meets a tragic end. His helmet shockingly fills with blood. Shaken by the deaths of their crew so far, the rest of the crew manage to make their way into the Midway Station. Captain Lucian attempts to call for help through the radio, but receives no response. Emily reflects on what's happening, and thinks that they've taken too much from the sea. She acknowledges that they shouldn't be down here drilling. Perhaps this is Mother Nature taking back what rightfully belongs to her. As she ponders this, Captain Lucian notices that cracks are beginning to appear in the structure of the Midway Station, but they need to carry on their journey across the ocean floor. Liam tells them that they need to leave him behind. He tells them that his oxygen pod is damaged, so he can't continue to walk. The crew refuse to leave him, and offer to help drag him across the ocean floor. The four of them start to walk along the ocean floor. They see glimpses of a creature in front of them and cautiously walk forward. Suddenly, a larger creature appears. The creature is different from the one they saw before. It looks almost as if it could be part human. It drags Liam away into a cave. However, the team manage to locate him. He is still alive. As they attempt to take him out of the cave, the creature appears again and starts to attack them. The team manage to save Liam from the cave. In the process, Captain Lucian and Nora are dragged along the floor of the ocean. They become separated from the rest of the team. As Captain Lucian and Nora try to find their way back to each other and the team, the creature appears again and starts to attack Nora. It attempts to consume her by wrapping its mouth around her helmet. Captain Lucian finds her and starts to attack the creature to save her. As they try to escape, the water pressure increases and threatens to kill them both. Captain Lucian starts to disconnect the oxygen supply on his suit in order to sacrifice himself and save Nora. Nora attempts to stop him, insisting that he should survive instead of her, as he has children. He doesn't listen to her, and disconnects the oxygen supply. The change in pressure drags him backwards and causes him to implode. Nora is propelled in the opposite direction and knocked unconscious by the impact. When she wakes, Nora makes her way across the ocean floor alone and comes across the abandoned Shepherd Station. She enters the station and removes her suit. She takes a shower and sobs as she mourns the loss of Captain Lucian. She attempts once again to radio for help, but there is no reply. She looks around the rest of the station and comes across some of her colleagues' belongings, including a uniform which belonged to Captain Lucian. Inside one of the pockets, she finds a small piece of card with his daughter's photograph and date of death on it. She realizes that his daughter passed away some time ago that he never told anyone. Realizing that Captain Lucian sacrificed himself for her, Nora realizes that she has to recoup and continue to try and find what's left of her crew. She changes her diving suit and heads back out along the ocean floor. As she walks along the ocean floor, Nora keeps trying to communicate with her team through the intercom system in the suit, but she's unsure if they can hear her. She starts to hear a female's voice speaking through the intercom system and responds, asking whether it's Emily. The person doesn't answer her, but continues to speak as if she is talking to another person. 
person. Nora then sees Emily ahead of her and runs toward her. She has been dragging Liam along with her. They are all reunited and start to walk along the ocean floor once again. During their walk, they talk about normal things, details about their life back home. They continue to walk and finally reach the Robux station. Emily starts to struggle as her oxygen levels drop. As they walk into the Robux station, they come across a nest of the creatures they encountered before. Some look like the first creature they saw, and others look more like the humanoid that tried to kill Nora. They appear to be asleep or dormant. The team sees the green light of the escape pods beyond the creatures and try to quietly make their way through the nest without disturbing them. As they do so, Emily's oxygen alarm sounds and wakes the creatures. Nora is attacked by one of the creatures which tries to eat her again. It manages to partially swallow her before she manages to kill it and escape. Nora quickly reunites with Emily and Liam. They reach the escape pods, but Nora soon discovers that only two of them are working properly. She doesn't say anything about this to Emily or Liam. In the background, the creatures continue to attack the structure of the Roebuck. Emily and Nora help Liam get into one of the escape pods. They seal the pod and Liam is evacuated. Nora then attempts to convince Emily to get into the next escape pod. Emily insists that she can take the last one so Nora can have the second. When Nora argues with her, Emily realizes that there are only two working escape pods. She protests that Nora should be the one to escape in the pod, but Nora physically forces her into it. As she fights back, Nora attacks Emily before forcing her fully into the pod and seals it. Emily is evacuated. Nora is left alone in the escape pod bay. The creatures start to surround the bay. She decides that instead of letting the creatures kill her, there's another way. She changes the settings throughout the station from a control panel to increase the pressure levels. We witness Nora in her final moments, a scene underscored by an epic ending a distant explosion resonating from the depths of the ocean. As the screen fades to black, the movie shows us clippings from newspaper articles about the incident. They show that Emily and Liam were the only survivors. None of the other escape pods made it. Lines from the newspaper articles show that the company responsible for the stations, Teon Industries, refused to be involved with any of the investigations following the incident. They also refused any help from the government and prohibited their employees from speaking to any members of the press. The final newspaper article shows a headline stating that Teon Industries are preparing to drill again, despite the investigation into the incident not having concluded. Well, that was certainly a downer ending. What do you think about this movie? Let me know in the comments. And be sure to hit the like button and subscribe so you don't miss our next recap. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.